Maybe he's just good on texting because you know you have a lot of people who have keyboard confidence. <laughs> Absolutely. And we, and we went to get something to eat. We got back. He prayed over our food. Mm. And I said the way he took my hand and Ooh. prayed over our food. Not yes, Lord. I, I, I was like, <laughs> I'm telling you, like listen, this whole like. Listen. So. <laughs> conversation mm. that's my biggest thing it's like is it an easy conversation that's your biggest thing next to physique yeah I, okay all right. oh physique first <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. they are called to be with this person they they heard from God if that person is single that is one version but then there is other version unfortunately and I will say it when they're married and Absolutely. yet there are women in the congregation that feel that way I live through that oh okay mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. way on tell, us mm -hmm. tell us more yeah yep. glory to God for good times big laughs the godly life we strive turn it up for the king right here on sunset Friday live let's go Sunset Friday, Sunset Friday, Sunset Friday Live. Hey, Sunset Friday, Sunset hey. Friday, Sunset Friday Live. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Sunset Friday Live, your home for everything Christian life and entertainment. I'm your host, Adana, and I have some of my girls with me. I'm super excited. This is going to be an episode of Girl Talk, so we're going to get into it. We're going to get into the mix. Everybody's going to be, like, real. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So we're gonna be real, and we're gonna be authentic. So, um, let me introduce them to you guys. I have to my right, Miss. Well, everybody's to my right, but to my right, Audrey Moise Belloni. That's how she says it on her uh, her voice <laughs> now. <laughs> she is a wife to a supportive husband and a mother of two lively twins, which is crazy okay that she has twins um also she is a legal hearing officer and she loves all things music all that's right. audrey um next to her we have my girl tasha Hi. <laughs> <laughs> natasha broussard she is um a veteran of the u.s army thank you for your mm -hmm. service mm -hmm. Uh, she has been married for 12 years and she has three children with her husband, Declan Braley and Journey. And in her spare time, she enjoys doing nothing, yes, which yes. I think we can all relate to. Yes, mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we have my girl, Kiana. Uh, mm -hmm. Kiana is the wife of Willie Bennett. She has four children, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, so she's busy. Uh, she is also a certified physician assistant in mm -hmm. trauma and acute care surgery. And you can always catch Kiana in the stands cheering her kids on because she's forever their biggest fan so these are my friends y'all we're gonna have a good time i'm super excited um and we're gonna be talking about you know something that i think we should be talking about mm -hmm. which is sex not sex spiritual sex <laughs> 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 Okay. We're gonna be talking about being spiritually sexual or sp like spiritual sexuality but i think we should define sexuality or mm. sexy you know mm. being sexy so um what is your definition of sexy natasha hmm so i think that understanding yourself your needs your what you want and appreciating your body and where you are in life i think that all of those play a part in sexuality um especially as women, um, we're really hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're really, um, we think that we need perfection mm. in order to even have a relationship. Yeah. Um, so I think the more we understand ourselves, the more we can understand what we want when it comes to sexuality. All right, Kian, what, yeah. what is the first thing that you think about when you think about sexy? I think inside out, right? So inside- The movie? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> inside out I feel like inside you have to be beautiful on the insides for it to be able mm -hmm. to shine on the outside so like sexy is not just like a look but okay. it's a, a look and a feel okay. right so I could be wearing sweatpants which is my everyday um, <laughs> attire um, and I can feel sexy in that uh, and it's because of how I feel on the inside about myself okay mm -hmm. what about you Audrey I agree with yeah. um, both of you that sexiness exudes from the inside it's confidence yeah. mm -hmm. it's knowing exactly who you are being comfortable in your skin and 
and being unapologetically you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we, it sounds like y'all are talking about a lot of like female type stuff, right? So Mm -hmm. like when you're looking at a man, what makes him sexy to you? Mm. It's more than looks for me. Okay. Um, but if you first see him. Oh, we're, we're going we're, for we're looks. Going, oh, okay. okay. We're, going, we're, going, we're, going at, we're going at, like, the attraction. Okay. Yes, if, okay. Like, if you first seen this person, or and you don't even really necessarily have a relationship with them. Got but maybe, you. Maybe, like, mm-hmm. you see them on a consistent basis. Got you. What, can, what would you be like, oh, man, he's kind of sexy. Okay, right. okay. What would you think? I'm going for a tall, like. Definitely over six foot, mm-hmm. preferably closer to six two. Light skin. Well, yeah. curly hair. Don't <laughs> describe my husband. Don't describe my husband. I don't know. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Try to clean that up. Good answer. What about you, Audrey? So, are you saying they haven't even said a word? Like, I mean, like, let's say if, you know, because. There are people that you see in everyday life. Like, it may be, like, an artist Mm -hmm. or, you know, a pastor, right? Or, um, I don't know, the grocery store clerk, right, that you go to Mm -hmm. all the time. You're like, man, he's kind of sexy. What would make make you say, oh, this person is kind of sexy? Okay, so for me, I think that Mm -hmm. when you see somebody, you can tell by their posture if they're confident. So I think Mm -hmm. if it exudes your vibe, your... Your yeah. energy, mm-hmm. if it's positive, mm-hmm. if it's pleasant, if it's charismatic, if you're confident, then you have a nice smile. Your teeth are nice. Ooh. You know, it just teeth, lets me yes. know that the hygiene is up there. <laughs> yes. I feel like if you have clear skin, it's like nice skin, like it's it's glowing, you know, it's just vibrant. You can tell someone's mm-hmm. taking care of themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. You can just tell when somebody is just vibrant, you mm-hmm. know, and I, I, I like that. That mm-hmm. automatically makes my eyes go, okay, yeah. okay, I, I see you. Okay. I'm feeling this. You know? So, yes, and of course, um, the haircut, you know, how they're Keeping hair up with yourself, and absolutely. The style, like yeah. they have style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about you, Cam? Definitely the physique. I'm a, I'm a athletic build mm-hmm. type of girl. Like, okay. you just see somebody walking in. Like, I go to the gym. You see somebody like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, that, that, that's sexy. <laughs> um, so that, that to me is more. And then, like you said, I love. The teeth first. Jesus, the teeth. <laughs> <That's the> teeth. <laughs> you, can't, you just can't get past it, right? You can't. You you're just looking in their mouth. So I, I get the teeth and, and and a swag for me. Swag. Mm-hmm. So between the athletic build, the swag, and then obviously the teeth. That I think that's. That's, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Swag. swag. The swag. <laughs> yeah. All right. So clearly there are different types of sexy, right? You know, we talking about physique and the physical, the attraction aspect of things. Um, we're talking about like their vibe in terms of like their charisma. Mm-hmm. Um, do they come off as kind? Do they show that they take care of themselves? What do you look for? Like, you know, this is a Christian show, so we're going to talk about like spiritually. So I remember I was having a conversation with Ann. I was like, you know, like. I mean, people can be, like, spiritually sexy. Like, they're not even cute, right? Mm. They don't even look good to you, per se. Mm. But you find yourself kind of, like, attracted to them, in a sense, mm. where it's like, oh, you know, like, yeah. you're you're cool. Um, has that ever happened to either, any of you? Any of you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's when you're talking to people... I mean, it it involves a conversation to me Mm -hmm. um, where, you know, as you're talking to them, how they are speaking about their relationship with God, their walk, their faith walk, Mm -hmm. um, how they, you know, interpret the Bible, just kind of their perception and outlook on life and faith and how God works in their lives. But more importantly, also in having a relationship with them, how they move to their character I think is when it's just like, oh, okay. So you you put your mouth where the money is. How do they say that again? What's the saying? Basically, it's not all talk. I was just you trying, to, I was trying to figure out where the, the mouth is. <laughs> first off. I was like, we talk about sex and <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's happening right now, y'all. Yeah, yeah, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, let me <laughs> let me gather it. Right, right, right. okay. <laughs> that basically they they um. They do the walk. It's right. not all talk. Okay. Mm. They walk the walk. They walk the walk. 
Okay, go. you got a little New York coming out. Yeah. Yeah. They walk the walk. walk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you, Kiana? Has that ever happened to you? Um, hmm. I would say like when I hear like someone pray. Mm. and their testimony a testimony will get me all the time because mm-hmm. they'll tell me like oh they'll they'll talk about like what happened and how god brought them out of something i'm like oh okay you 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 got that okay there's that relationship because it shows a relationship versus people who are like just spewing scriptures and it's they don't have the fruit mm-hmm. that's what they don't have mm-hmm. right okay so. so anthony was like nah that's what the young people say that's cat yeah he's like nah you can't there's no way you you cannot be attracted to somebody that you're not attracted to right like if they don't mm. if you're not attracted to them like you can't mm. be spiritually attracted mm. he, i was like is that a god thing <clears throat> is that a god thing do you know how many stuff? females probably went after jesus Mm. Seeing all the, he was bringing home, but you don't think Jesus was I think Jesus was not the man. Hold on, was he, fine. was he fine to everyone? Yes, girl, he yes. was saving yes. people. No. He was but doing see, things. That's why? <laughs> but physically, he might not have been fine to everybody. I agree. I but you see him fine. over here yeah, healing and and yeah. making the blind see. I feel like, like my Lord and Savior was fine. Okay? I, I mean, listen. my Lord and Savior. <laughs> What I'm telling you is, I think more females were attracted based off of what he was doing. So is it a female thing then? So is it only females that get into that spiritual, oh, like you're spiritually sexy to me. You know, I can see myself with you because you're really spiritual. You got it going, you know, the charisma, Mm -hmm. your prayers, whatever. Like you're speaking life into me versus like I'm actually attracted to you. Like physically attracted and then we go from there i think the man starts with physical attraction I was first, just period. about to say that they're yeah. very yes. very just, visual, visual people yes like men are visual they're visual. and that's what's going to grasp them first mm-hmm. period so then essentially they what you're saying is they can't initially be spiritually attracted i think that can come I, yes but, but i but think not initially i don't i not from, man. I, from what right yeah. not from, <laughs> from what i've seen i don't think so i hope you're enjoying this episode of girl talk with my wife and her friends right here on sunset friday live but it feels a little off to me to be honest with you it feels like like it needs a male perspective if you agree with me, type in the comment section right now, guy talk, and I'll get some of my friends together and we're going to hit this same topic, but only from the guy perspective, you know, because you need to hear us too. We need to hear each other. You know, ladies, God, we got to work together on this. So hit it up, guy talk, like this video, and let's get back to the ladies. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think there may be a small percentage of men that can Yeah, we can't put on all. <laughs> That's right. You know, look. A small percentage of men <laughs> Then you know, uh, then the physical. But mm-hmm. I think with other things, it's kind of um, accepted in society that women take other things in consideration, and mm-hmm. the love can grow for other reasons than physical. Because a lot of times in pairings, you see like mm-hmm. gorgeous women with men that you're just like, hmm, and you know? and and just people that you're like, oh, there's someone for everyone. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that like, part. Oh, yes. Exactly. yes. Someone There's for someone there. I'm like, hmm. Right. Didn't quite expect it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I can see that. What what would you say first attracted you to your husband? Who's going I, to I, I, I was a, Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> So for me, I mean, our story is very is on the unique side in that we were um introduced through his sister um and it was a long distance relationship so 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 let's let's unpack this <laughs> a little bit so you were introduced it like with the hopes or desire of no okay so just introduced as friends it was introduced like i think you're a phenomenal person and here's another phenomenal person mm-hmm. and maybe you guys can see like and be phenomenal together. i just want you to know mm. about this phenomenal person okay and mm. then from there you guys do what you want with that that's okay. how kind of how it was okay presented. so did you cultivate a friendship first? yes okay. it was a friendship because we had never seen each other face to face um so it kind of i always say this it gave like pen pal vibes mm-hmm. oh, okay so we would um <laughs> just uh, at first, we did texting, like WhatsApp texting for okay. the longest, mm-hmm. um, for about a year. 
And then... Still friends at this point. Still pen pal friends. Or pals. <laughs> I'll say pen pals because it wasn't pals? even a friend. I mean, it mm-hmm. takes a lot to be a friend to me. It definitely takes physical, like, interactions. Meaning... Being in the same space, Maybe. going right. out, and nothing, mm. you know, I gotta clear it up because yeah. of the You sure <laughs> 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 so, yes, it's just a written dialogue and all that, sharing of, you know, different mindsets, outlooks, mm-hmm. and stuff. <laughs> and then he was coming to visit his sister, and he was like, you know, I wanna, you know, you. actually see you because we've been talking off and on. And then from there, from seeing me, okay, guys? Okay, yeah. listen. <laughs> from that like, day, <laughs> <seeing me. laughs> <'Cause he's visible. laughs> that's invisible. Listen, he put it all <laughs> together. You had his mind first, then you were talking to Okay, I want to pursue this further. Yes. Okay, okay. so it, you know, I mean, okay. come on. I mean, but for yeah. you, what was it? Um, For me, it was the fact that whatever we were discussing in mm-hmm. that year off and on right you know it could be confirmed because at first i was kind of scared because this would be our first face to face and i was mm-hmm. like what if he's not like the chemistry is not there what if you know he is like super super shy and socially awkward i was oh. i had all mm-hmm. kinds of things in my mind maybe he's just good on texting because you know you have a lot of people who have keyboard confidence uh, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so i was just <laughs> I've never heard it, but I love it. Yeah. So I um I, I I had a lot of thoughts, but when I saw him, and actually it was in church we met for the first time, um I saw him come in. Of course, the height, the physique, his smile, and then when we had a conversation, it felt just mm. like how we were, you know, it. talking. Yeah. yeah. What were yeah. you wearing? Oh, um, what was <laughs> I wearing? Um, I I was wearing a dress. I was wearing a Fitted? nice dress. I mean, I was meeting somebody that day. <laughs> she was ready. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're going to see me. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 we're going to get back, back to that. Wait, wait, wait. I couldn't mm-hmm. do all of that because I was singing on the praise team. So okay. it, was, oh, okay. it was Christian sexy. Okay. And we're going to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, let's, what first attracted you to your husband? Mm. So we met the same way. We met through a mutual friend. They they said the same thing. They were like, I know this great person, and I know you're a great person. Want you to meet. But it's interesting what you said because the first time I met, we started messaging on Facebook first, mm-hmm. and um, he 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 tried to play me. Like he didn't respond huh? to my message. I said, Oh no, you gonna respond to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep messaging you. You yeah. gonna text me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. Right? <laughs> so. <laughs> So he finally did, and um, we met, Mm -hmm. and we went to get something to eat. We got back. He prayed over our food, Mm. and I said, the way he took my hand and prayed over our food, I'm telling you, like, this whole, like, I said, so. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, it was the Mm -hmm. the prayer. It was Mm. the prayer. I've never had that before. Mm. He yeah. was looking through, because I had went to do something in my apartment. He was looking through my Bible. He saw it all, like, written through and highlighted. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, he was like, oh, okay. This is another level. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, I'm okay with it, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was wearing my summer dress. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It, I, oh. I feel like the pair, pair really... Um, brought it in because right. he was very good with words mm. via message mm. and so i was i wanted to see how that all came Played together yeah. what about you Kelly? um so conversation mm. that's my biggest thing it's like is it an easy conversation that's yeah. your biggest thing next to physique yeah I, okay all right oh physique first <laughs> <laughs> the thing, the thing works. Uh, so, um, but conversation. I, I remember our first, it wasn't even a date. It was like, um, we went out. Uh, he was like, oh, what you buying me? This, this is his line. What, what you buying me for, for dinner? I was like, what? Mm-hmm. You got it all this incident. And I was like, you know, you going to buy me something. He's like, exactly. So what you want? And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> okay, you know, I was like, right. yeah, right. Right. And they always got some yeah. like, something like that because we met kind of very similar to the pen pile like mm-hmm. long distance e mm-hmm. like but if we weren't 
emailing back and forth. We were on the phone. Mm. Um, and But at the same time, it was like, oh, like, in our conversations, he was like, okay, let's pray. And I was like, let's pray? Like, I ain't never, you know, right. I'm the one that usually had to, like, initiate yes. the spiritual aspect yes. of things. And to have somebody initiate that for me where I didn't have to be the one carrying mm-hmm. it, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, 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 Mr. Hackett. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, when we were on high five, and so he sent his first, what, seven digits or something like that, or the last seven, and he's like, if you want the full number, you're going to have to ask me for the rest. And I was no. like, <laughs> I well, all right then. I was like, sir, please. Yeah. 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 But I didn't ask for no. <laughs> But you got it. Yeah. So yeah, it's a combination mm-hmm. of all of those things, right? Yeah. You know, the fact that it's not just, and we didn't, of course, there was, like, a physical attraction. Like, we yeah. saw it. You know, we had pictures or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it it really allowed us to cultivate a friendship and right. get to know each other a little bit more on the more emotional side. Yeah. So, I, I feel like the spiritual sexuality or being spiritually sexy is, like, more of a female thing than a man, like, than a male thing. Like, of course, women can be sexy spiritually to men. But for the initial, it, mm-hmm. it's usually a, a yeah. female we're gonna touch on your your little situation a little bit later, but I did want to talk to you guys about something. So my my initial idea of this subject came about because I saw earlier this year there was a story about a sixty three year old man, um, bishop, and it's a little old because it happened two mm. years ago. But he's a bishop. And he got married to, to this 18. 19-year-old mm-hmm. girl. That's so right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Anthony was like, he look like her granddaddy. Like, <laughs> what is she doing? And I was like, I mean, you mm-hmm. know, maybe it's like like him. Like his yeah. charisma. His. I was like, mm. she might be spiritually like attracted to him like mm-hmm. in a sexy like she might think he's sexy and fine based on the fact like he has this power you know yes. he's an authority yes. and you know he's a minister and he's he's like, uh, uh, that's that's her granddad he old enough i was like okay so i wanted to see what you guys thought about that i mean there there's like some other allegations behind it about grooming and some uh, other things because mm. she had been like going to his house and stuff from mm. the age of 16 mm. and he bought her a graduation car as a gift Ooh, and Jesus. he said he was going to take her under his wings like all of this other stuff right i don't know this is what the end this is what the streets right. say okay <laughs> so i don't know for sure but what do you think about like younger men and women but in this case females like marrying these older men that aren't they they don't necessarily seem attractive but like what do you what do you think is it part of this whole topic of they might just be spiritually sexy to them? i absolutely think that that there are a group of women like that um i've heard stories and i think i remember this story but i've heard stories where women in the congregation are mesmerized by mm-hmm. the pastor or elders mm-hmm. um i think there's like a fascination Absolutely. or yes. even sometimes an obsession yes. mm-hmm. and if that man of god is really powerful in that his ministry is fruitful is um you can see god's power through him and he has strong leadership skills mm. for a lot of women they they are drawn to that right. and attracted mm. by that authority yeah and some of them um, take it a, a bit further, and sometimes they feel like they are called. Mm. Yeah. called oh, to, to, be, oh, to be with him? To be mm. Yes, mm. I've oh. heard these stories. Like, yeah. they are called to be with this person. They they heard from God if that person is single, uh, if a pastor that's single. That's why I think mm. there's an undertone in many conferences to make sure mm. that pastors are married. married because yeah. there mm. is this thing sometimes where they're fascinated and they're just like, oh, God called me. Yes, the Holy Spirit told me that mm. I am your wife. <laughs> Um, and that is the, that is one version, but then Mm -hmm. there is other version, unfortunately, and I will say it when they're married, Mm 
And Absolutely. yet, there are women in the congregation that feel that way. I lived through that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So let's mm -hmm. segue on mm -hmm. Tell us more. Yeah, because yeah. your husband was a, he, a pastor. He was a, he was an associate pastor. Um, <clears throat> he never owned his own mega church or anything, not even anything like that. But just having to get up and speak or introduce this person or pray, mm -hmm. it's like we're married, mm -hmm. but these women mm -hmm. are like... But that's the attraction. It's like, man, mm. he must be, he's so spiritual. He, he's connected to God. Mm. He's, you know, he's deep like and me this too. and that. He's connected to, to me. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hello. And, and women, women are bold. Yes, Lord women Jesus. Women are so bold. Yes, they are. And disrespectful. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That yes. part. So they will. They'll have this attraction to just the man standing up there. Mm -hmm. Because he's maybe getting some type of reaction or from from the congregation or he's just so deep into the word and the Holy Spirit that he has that they're like, man, that's man. Sexy. I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. I think that that women are very disrespectful mm -hmm. in that. And I. I couldn't imagine being wow. married to a pastor because it's like celebrity, mm. right? Yeah. And so um, people do see them as like almost like they're a celebrity. And it's that would make me feel so uncomfortable because you have to sit there and smile. Mm. And the church hugs that aren't church hugs that they would give, uh. it, that to me would bother me as a, as a wife. And you, know, you as a woman know when another woman it's is trying. trying to push up on yes. your man. And yes. so it, I think that for me would be. It, Women are so bold. I'm still a baby Christian at that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, My husband has stories of what women will do facing uh, when you're up on the podium uh, that only he can see. Uh, yes. yes. Very bold. My sister dated a pastor. Yeah. And she was telling, I was like, people in the church? Listen. Like what? Like what? Girl, like, but like, like screaming, screaming shirt up, up, no underwear. Yes. yes. Wink, wink. Open that leg. Yes. Listen. Yes. 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 It's, yes. So yes. Real. it's so it's real. real. Or sometimes it's like, oh, Pastor so and so, I can fix you a plate. Yes. Oh, yeah. I can you it. pray with me? Yeah. Well, this is why a male <laughs> should never pray. Ne well, not that. <laughs> can I say it? Can I say it? <laughs> I always have someone else Absolutely. in the room. Period. Period. It's, it's Period. Should never happen. Yes. 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 Period. That's. I'm telling I you. I want to go back to this this 63 year old grandfather. Yeah. I mean, a husband and this 19 year old and he's wife. He's been divorced three times. I'm just so saying, that's what the streets yeah. say. So <laughs> that's pedophilia. I don't care what y'all yeah. talk about. Yeah, she's, uh, she's 19. 19. She's 19. Her brain isn't even fully developed. Well, she's, she he did. Say, mm -hmm. she didn't need anybody to sign any papers, okay? So she was able to sign. Because he waited. An she is an adult. Because <sighs> he waited. So she signed them papers and did it on her own. But it's the and grooming. So it's, that's the, it's that's the, grooming. the part. It's the fact that he journeyed with her from young. And mm -hmm. the thing is that in our, in the religious sector, I've been thinking about everything that we've been saying. You know, it's kind of like how men are kind of taught to look for a woman who can provide, mm. uh, not provide, but nurture the yes, home exactly. and take care of the home. Well, on yes. the flip side, women are taught to find a priest, mm -hmm. somebody who can be the priest of In your home. home. Mm -hmm. And then we take these ideologies and these beliefs and then we, it, sometimes it can be morphed into something. So mm -hmm. a lot of women, they are just trying to search for this person who can be the priest, the mm, priest. Right. And depending on, you know, people's background and how they grew up, sometimes they put people on a pedestal. Absolutely. And then there's an imbalance there. Yes. Especially if you're young, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and so you reverence this person, you put them on a pedestal, they can almost do no wrong. Mm -hmm. And everything that utters out of their mouth, you just hold oh, it like yeah. it's gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to see what's happening here. So, yes, she's an adult, but mm -hmm. you've been with her and journeyed with her from young. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So she's already biased to whatever you, you're offering. Yeah. And so you got to watch she was younger wrong. to do that. You think I, it was wrong. Do I think it's wrong? You think it was wrong for her. Let, let me just say this. Her. My child <laughs> could not marry a 
someone that's my father's age. Mm. That is absolutely like what but is what the, would you do? What is the adult. conversation mm. that you're having with a 19 year old as a 63 year old man who's lived through many of different life, you know, journeys. You've been married. You probably have children that are old, grandkids that are mm. older than her. So like, there's no conversation. There's nothing. Her brain isn't developed. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we talking about? And what about? does her parents say? I, I'm curious that's to question. understand. So again, they the might have sold her to the yeah, to the like, oh, so, I mean, I did some research, but it's just a, there's lots of different speculation. But apparently, like the father is a musician in the church in in his mm. congregation. So I mean, they are aware. You know, yeah. like they're they're engaged in they they know that this happened or was happening so clearly they're fine with and her it. daddy walked her down the aisle I don't know about all but that. But sometimes <laughs> the streets talk to me about that. I, mean, I, I ain't find that on the internet. Yeah. Well, sometimes the parents revere the pastor as well. It's like whatever yeah. the pastor is asking, like, I'm going to take your daughter and give her Bible studies. They're like, oh, yes, Absolutely. this is what needs to happen. I That's what not, Pastor someone so no, said. That, no. Because a pastor is still a human being. I don't exactly. care. A man is a man. A human being is a human being. We're yes. not, I don't care what your position is. Yes. Period. Yes. Period. Unless you're my Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ walking this earth. Absolutely. <laughs> Who could not be tempted? I know. I agree. But there are people, you know, that have that type of reverence and I, trust. That's interesting. I, that I, trust. That, that's oof. hard. That's hard. Yeah. Because you want to believe that you can trust. Mm. You do. You want to believe that if I go to someone in the church, mm-hmm. I can trust you. Absolutely. You want to believe that. I don't trust you. Want to believe you that to be alone with my no, you don't. son you don't. or daughter. No. Like, Period. If, is this a group study? Okay. Yes. Yeah. With other elders or other people. But why do you have to do that alone? Yeah. In this I think age? people, you know, especially in, if, if I can remember, like, as a teenager, you know, like, that's the, like, mo- the more tumultuous times of a, a child's life. And yeah. so, you know, you're banging heads with your parents and they're like, oh, yeah. we're going to need a pastor to pray for you. Get that mm. devil out you. You know, all of that yeah. stuff. And so... I think that there may be some um, grooming of the family, mm. like uh, mm. as well. Like just saying, like I, I just can't imagine. The, so you the think the family was trying to groom them, groom their daughter, but not that. So were they? Do you feel like they may have been sending her to him, trusting that he would change her ways? Or absolutely, as a teenager, is that the same as grooming? You know what I mean? Yes. Like, is, I think in that all, way, I think it all depends on what is being said and yeah. done in those sessions. Yes, right? absolutely. And, uh, I, I feel like a lot of what grooming is all about is about the dependence mm-hmm. on that person in authority. Right. And so um, maybe she felt like, you know, like mm-hmm. I could depend on him and I, it's only him that can take care of me or whatever the case may be. I don't know, because there's not really much being said. about. That sounds like daddy because, issues. Mm-hmm. But this yeah, is the thing. Be. It could be. It is so. The line is so fine, right? Mm-hmm. It could be a situation where they did go to the pastor for help, mm-hmm. you know. And um, if the church's culture is that the pastor is revered, mm-hmm. and yeah. whatever he says, you know, people abide by it, trust mm-hmm. it, right? Yeah. And that relationship is formed. Oftentimes, not m- several, t- not many times, but the that role can take advantage mm-hmm. of yes. that level of Absolutely. trust. And Absolutely. he is generational. Like the, right. his grand, his grandfather was in that particular denominational mm. church and then his father and his mother is who started that church and then it was passed down to okay. him. So, it is so like, it's, his word is it. It's gold. gold. And so yeah. when you see that, that kind of relationship and pattern, maybe she took it upon herself like, yeah, I'm depending on this person because yeah. it's yeah. already established and then here you go, an advantage, uh, a dis- um something is taken advantage of. Right, yeah. exactly. Know. That's, that's sad. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I was know. I was just intrigued because I was like, I mean, this man is pretty old. <laughs> like, you know, he's, he's not like super sexy or anything like that. You know, there are some mm-hmm. like, Good looking older man, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah some good looking older yeah. man, but he was he not one of them. He was not eye candy. <laughs> what do they call the old ones? Zaddy. Yeah, Zaddy. Yeah. Zaddy. Oh, yeah. Zaddy. Yeah. Like a daddy that's mm-hmm. 
what is it's it like a, a sexy that da- sexy daddy mm-hmm. it's a it's a older 65 and over oh that's mm-hmm. like that's, a sugar daddy mm-hmm. no 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 they're not sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just look they good just they're fine, fine. Look good. They're they're fine. fine. <laughs> i mean they okay. could be but i don't think that's what zadie's about it's just mm-hmm. that group of men who are 65 and over that look good that okay. look good all right well yeah he's not it <laughs> so i was just trying to understand like what it was and then if it i mean you know bring the other conversation is it wrong because she's an adult so like we is can, she though i mean technically she, she an adult, technically yeah. in our country however i honestly don't believe we're adults until our brain is fully developed at what age uh what is that 25 25? 26 25 yeah and men take longer and even 30. <laughs> Listen, I said I was gonna come back to Ooh. your part of the conversation because you know you talked about um meeting your husband long distance first time yada yada but First time meeting, meeting him. him in person, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, I was like, "Well, which, well what were you wearing?" Mm-hmm. And you're like, "Oh, it was, uh, it was somewhat appropriate, right? Because you had to be on." I mean, on it was appropriate, but it- so okay. So let's talk about appropriateness mm-hmm. and sexiness in terms of dress, right? Because you made the comment like you were on stage, so it had to be right. Mm-hmm. If you weren't on stage, would it have been different? <laughs> Mm. Would you have thought it's something different? I mean, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I would have worn what I had worn. Okay. Um, maybe in a different color because it was a color scheme. But I, I would have worn what I worn. I had, I mean, I had these really. I think it was five inch, six inch heels. Um, they were like they were cute. <laughs> till this day he remembers the, the color wow. of the heel yes okay. he remembers the color dress too but you know it was nicely fitted that's okay. what i would say nicely mm-hmm. fitted dress okay right so mm-hmm. in terms of women and being sexy like what i know we touched on it early you know it's about how you feel about yourself and like all of like the inner stuff like how does that translate now into what you wear I think the church has messed me up with that. Okay. Um, after, you know, with mm-hmm. Mario being up front and like, it's your, all eyes are on the wife, mm-hmm. like all the time. Mm-hmm. And like, um, just the judgments I have received yeah. from certain things being worn or, mm. you know, to this day, and he hasn't pastored in years, but to this day, I have like PTSD for what I'm wearing at church or even at a in a like a sports event that right. where I know church people, people will be. be. Yeah. I went my son's soccer, like I'm I'm dressed but I have like this hole in the back. I'm like, is this too much Mario? I'm worried mm-hmm. because I represent him and he's never he's like, You are fine. Like you are fully clothed. Like you're not going out mm-hmm. there looking crazy, but I I've just received so much judgment for certain things like that that I um I'm still, I get away about it. Mm-hmm. When, whereas I, and I believe that those that are more in the older generation believe that everything should be covered up and like head to toe and not this and not that, where I don't believe that that's true. I believe that um, there's a limit, but also that we should be free to be comfortable and we should be free to be confident in what we're wearing and not have everyone's eyes on us or judgments. So how do you find that balance between like personal expression, right? Mm -hmm. Of like how you feel, what you want to wear at this moment and then being modest. How do you find that balance? I think that, um, you, you find the balance because you are a representation of your husband when you're walking outside. Uh, it's unfortunate that people made you feel that way about your clothing. Um, I can remember as a teenager, the church hurt that we talk about, Mm -hmm. um, it came with clothing Mm -hmm. and I was so rebellious because I just felt like I'm just here to love God. Like I'm, I just, I don't, I shouldn't be worried about how I look. So I would wear sweatpants, 
to church and my parents were like, you don't want to dress up? I'm like, no. <laughs> I, I just like fought the tradition mm. because I wanted the relationship. And so for me, it was about the relationship. It wasn't about what I had on. I didn't ever want to be a distraction for a man because I, as we know, like men, they're very visual people. So I don't want to be a distraction. So I'm not going to come to church with my boobs hanging out, you know, the shortest shirt, shorts that I have or anything like that. But if you're at a sporting event, then I'm going to wear sports. Clothing. So what? What is too short? What's inappropriate? I mean, because there are women, right, mm-hmm. in their personal expression, who feel like a little bit of cleavage or a lot of bit of cleavage is just fine. Or, um, you know, years ago there was that fallout for Erica Campbell when she had on that like super form fitted, like she was like hourglass, okay. but she was completely covered. Like she, it was like this. She had like a turtleneck. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. it was like long sleeve, right. white, but you know, she got a little bit of body. So she, it was fitted. So, mm-hmm. but people thought that that was inappropriate because of how fitted it was. Mm. Right. So, I mean, what is like, who's to say like, this is not appropriate. And this is like, so, how do you, Find that balance for me. I'm speaking for myself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think it's a, it's a God and me. It's a vertical relationship. Um, First or first. Okay. Not period. Okay. But first, because I also agree that you don't want to be a stumbling block for others. But I think if your relationship with God Mm -hmm. is, is intimate, Mm -hmm. then he's a good indicator. The Holy Spirit will speak. Like there are things Mm -hmm. that, you know, I am checking in the mirror and the Holy Spirit's like, hmm, really? And I'm like, really? And we have the conversation like, what you You know, you know, the Holy Spirit and I are talking and I'm like, it's not that bad. And you know, I'm trying to convince the Holy Spirit that you are right. I mean, we have a real conversation and I'm rushing. I'm like, and and I'm rushing. And then that means I would have to do this or that. And then I'll go to my husband and be like, D- what do you think? Like, that, uh, that'll be like my last, like, yeah. okay, check it out. This, you know, is what do you think? I don't tell him my whole conversation, but I, you know, and if he's like, uh, yeah, you, you don't got anything else? Then I'm just like, oh, mm-hmm. I think it's fine. But then, you know, yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. If you say something, you know, because right. he is very even kill and he is actually quite open. He's not going to be the type, like, right. I need you in a paper bag. That's right. not him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's interesting that you said as a teenager, I'm a PK. So that as a teenager was mm. a rough time for me because I at uh, at the age of 10, you know, I hit puberty and I was I was filled out. Mm-hmm. OK, but, you know, the clothes that are in the stores and all that, you know, my mom brought the clothes mm-hmm. and stuff. And, you know, I would wear appropriate clothing, mm-hmm. but I was Filled or out and a lion. lot exactly and mm-hmm. a lot of um, church members used to you know say things uh, not a lot but a few people would right. say things um, but I thank God that my mom and dad you know stood up and stood their ground because they they were making sure that you know it wasn't right. inappropriate and stuff but it's everybody's say mm. and what you yeah. have to you know right. what you, what it, what is appropriate or not and it is a thing that based on your body type. It looks different. Absolutely. What you wear. Yes. You know, and um, I think that, yes, there is a line where it's drawn, where right. it's just like, okay, that is that really modest and what is that really appropriate? What's but, that line? How do, you, how do you figure that line out? Well, <laughs> no, the, for real, because the line there are is, women out there who, like, I mean, I'm not wearing like, and it, and again, this is all for different environments, right? So like if obviously what I'm wearing to the beach isn't something I wear to church or to the store. Um, but there are things that I see other women wearing on the beach. And I'm like, uh, like, I don't mm-hmm. know if mm-hmm. that's okay. You know, right. like, but I don't know if that's partially like, oh, like I, just for my body, that would be okay. Or if, if it's for everybody that that wouldn't be okay. So like, what is the line? Like where, how do you, how do you balance that? And what is the, how do you, I guess, envelop like sacredness for the environment of church or around church people mm-hmm. to wear like your dresses, like modest, but yet it could still be sexy, right? Like, well, I'm how speak- do you, how do you do that? I'm going to speak from a total, and I'm a, I'm a tight end. So I'm going to speak from like a ministry standpoint. 
So I'm, I'm heavily involved in my music ministry, right? And so they have rules. And even when I was a minister of music, there were rules. Like, okay, make sure that when it's short, uh, I mean, make sure that your skirt isn't short. Mm -hmm. And short was like, if you're standing and you're putting your hands to your side. You can't touch that it can't be, That's cool. It can't be shorter than your, the <laughs> longest <laughs> finger, right? Right, 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 right? Or like nothing super tight where we're seeing your undergarments like imprinted on it. Or mm. um, nothing low cut or, uh, you know, right? that kind of stuff. Um, and I think those are guides right. so that we aren't revealing, you know, things that are, that would stray. Nothing, that would that, nothing should be popping out. Exactly. That would cause distraction. <laughs> right. Intriguing others. However, right. what, what I've noticed over the years, those guidelines are still not um, so, like so solid that people don't try to push the envelope, yeah. the envelope you know? Uh -huh. So, um, I think at the end of the day, if it's something that you're wearing, that multiple people start saying stuff like, hey, you know, this is a bit of a distraction. I think some deference should be given if multiple people are saying it. And it depends on who's saying yeah, it. Yeah, because okay. are they okay. saying that? Matters. Matters. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, yeah. They're 60 years old, 65, and saying that because of their views of what we should be top to bottom, fully covered, no, and no, no, no. like the exactly. paper bag, like exactly. you said. Yeah. yeah, I think it matters who is saying mm -hmm. it, um, how often it's being said, and the rationale behind it. Yeah. Right. Um, deference should be given like okay let me think about it and let the whole and, and talk about it to the Holy Spirit I think that's the thing that we often miss we just take what people say and then like oh should I incorporate it no if you really ask God and say hey I'm, I'm getting this a lot right show me if you if, if you really think this is something I need to give focus on yeah. impress it in my spirit where right. it won't leave and mm -hmm. every time and this is in general I tell that to the Holy Spirit if it's something that I really need to work on he keeps it there. Right. And it's something that I'm like, oh, this is not shaking off. So I need to figure this out. And I think that's the part that's missing. It's like we take what people say, but do you bring it back to God and say, okay, is there any merit to this? But a lot of people aren't there even if they're in church, right? Oh, right. So it's mm -hmm. like some people just want to do what they want to do and are proud of it and confident in it, which I don't knock them for. But if it is distracting, mm -hmm. then pray for the person. That's the problem. Like when it becomes distracting. But I will say there are people who are so conservative. Those five inch heels that yeah, attracted your husband yeah. is a problem. Is a problem. Yes. Oh, but yes, baby. A kitten heel is what you're supposed to wear. That's that's what they used to say. <laughs> yeah, a, kitten. a kitten heel. This is true. A kitten heel. <laughs> what is that? Because a, a five-inch like heel, it makes your body like look different. It yeah. makes your body yes. look different. You and know? So I, where did we draw the line? Because That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> yeah. honestly, like, I don't know. Is it a matter of, like, how you are... Is how you're dressing physically a representation of where you're at spiritually? You Absolutely think? not. No. Absolutely so, not. But people so do when, equate it. Okay. But some people are more into that. Like, I grew up with very like much older parents i never got taught like fashion i'm still to this day like yeah. just not very good at it you mm -hmm. know what i mean um and then after you have kids it's a whole different story like yeah, <laughs> it's like just changes right definitely, so definitely. um i think that it it just is i i, I don't think anything on the outside can mm -hmm fully equate to where you are spiritually. Exactly. Absolutely. I just I, don't. Because you could be completely clothed and heathen. Exactly. Heathen. Yes. And heathen. Me. You could be in church every weekend. Every weekend. So we're not every talking weekend. about the, the bad aspect. We're talking about, like, let's say, like, how Audrey was talking, right? I mean, it's a matter of, like, if you're feeling like the spirit is trying to convict you on something. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm out and I'm like, yo, I think this looks good, right? Yeah. Like, Or it may be short, but, like, my finger because even that is short honestly like where like your finger touches when you sit down and yeah, such because yes. when you sit down because you have mm -hmm. your breast and all you know you mm -hmm. got a little bit of hip or booty mm -hmm. action that thing rises up mm -hmm. okay. get so you a good like, old prayer club so, girl <laughs> so this is my thing and though. keep it okay, covered i'm gonna play <laughs> i want to advocate for for a side here okay. for the for the boom, boom, boom side yes okay i want to advocate it. because <laughs> Let's hear it. 
all of us have great features, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, and I'm. Where is the line drawn where those features may testify of how God is good? <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. And at the same time, you reserve. The reverence that's needed yes. to dress Please, okay. Okay. Yes. Now, I'm gonna say it's like because I, I one time I wore a dress, it was not it was like maybe two inches above my knee. Like it wasn't short mm-hmm. short. While you were standing up, but I was on the pulpit. Okay. Yeah. I had high heels because I love high heels. Mm-hmm. I wore dark stockings. Mm-hmm. Oh, and okay? stockings. Okay. And then two people came up to me and gave me compliments, but you know when the compliments like they were like, "Ooh, girl, them legs." Ah, uh, the little back hand. Yeah, the back hand. They're like, "Ooh, the girl, them comments. legs," and I'm like, "Thank you." Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I knew. But at the same time, I made sure that I had dark, opaque, isn't yeah. it? Opaque tights. Right. You know, it wasn't too short. It, I mean, right. it was two inches above my knee, and and I'm saying like, what I should wear long dresses because I know that. I have calves. Right. <laughs> you're dressing right. for a woman, essentially, because there's no man that knows that you're married in a church is going to come up to you and say anything about how you're That's actually dressed. inaccurate, but... Oh, men? Yeah. The men will really? come talk to you, like, the elders will come and speak well, to you, but also, I mean... And men, tell you that you're inappropriate? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, in the yes. Caribbean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Not oh, even yes. the Caribbean. Everywhere. And everywhere also, I mean, and also, you know, men will probably come and be like, oh, girl, them legs, right? Like, there, there are bold men like that. So, I, I really think that there's like, like you said, there's a thin line because I was recently um, on praise team and there was a dress like there was a dress code and I had like two different options that I could go with. Um, and I had worn the dress maybe like three weeks prior at a different church. It was fine. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I'm just in the audience. But on stage elevated, mm-hmm. you know, I'm mm-hmm. walking or I'm moving. Mm-hmm. And when you walk a little like it, it's like um a tuxedo suit mm. dress so you know a little bit can like open so i was like mm, I, don't, I don't know right i don't know and i didn't want any mm. anything mm. to be distracted from the ministry so yeah. i was like all right you know what okay fine mm-hmm. i'll switch to this green dress and the green dress was longer below my knee still cute still fitted ish right mm-hmm. in certain places but different and so i feel like there is a bit of care that we need as women when we are expressing like our sexy mm-hmm. um, especially as a married woman like yeah. you know especially as a married woman like if you walking down the street like I don't know like are do you, are you guys comfortable with cleavage mm-hmm. I'll do tank tops you oh, know yeah. um, shorter shorts that have some holes um, in them but like and then think about if you're going out with your husband. I mean, I'm I know that's a different story. With my husband. I'm always his girlfriend. There you go. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think yes. you also need to consider, take into consideration, like, different shapes. Um, it's almost inevitable that something will show because, un- or else some have to wear turtlenecks mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. I- and I'm it just still being shows. Honest. No, for real. I'm just being honest. And mm-hmm. it will still show, depending mm-hmm. on the fit. Mm-hmm. You know? And so, yes, I don't have an issue with that. I'm not going full blown coverage. Right. But right. I thought you know, it I, how much cleavage? How many breaths? <laughs> right. How many finger breaths? I'm not cleavage. popping out like back in the day where they wore their garter thing and you you know, you're seeing the, the cup. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing all that. No mm-hmm. Bridgerton. No Bridgerton. Okay. There I you think go. you need to I think I, mean, I may do everything. You may do Bridgerton. Okay. I'm I'm not, not, I'm I'm not, I'm on a date on a date see and that's the thing there are different spaces we can't just that's where I was going that's where I was going the way the way I'm on stage if I am ministering on stage I'm I'm dressing a certain way that is palatable for Mm -hmm. a wide mass Mm -hmm. that will be different from when I'm in the pews like I Mm -hmm. may come to church with a slacks yes I'm probably not allowed to wear pants on, on the pulpit, depending on the church, mm. but I will wear slacks or I may, I, I, I don't have any problems wearing a thick, um, like sleeveless, sleeveless, sleeveless. Uh, in the congregation or even something like this. I wouldn't be in my standards in the congregation. Would I do that on, on the stage? No. 
Mm-hmm. That's different from when I'm out and about with my kids. Knowing your environment exactly. is very mm-hmm. important. And then if I'm on a date. Yes, let's bridge it to on it. Right. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> that is, that is, that's a difference. That's a sexual that's a difference. Yeah, because you're with your husband. Right. Absolutely. You're with your husband. Now, would I bridge it to with my kids? No. no. You know, yeah. so, but some it's, women do. Exactly. And some women and that's do. Up to them. Mm. That is what makes it so hard bringing it full circle. Mm-hmm. Men are visual, period. Yes. Whether with, you're mm-hmm. with your husband, mm-hmm. whether you're with your kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Men are visual. That and that's what makes that's it true. hard. Like even, and we're talking about church, but I even saw a discussion where somebody's like, well, what if you go on a couple's trip? Yeah. Right? Oh, I the saw a discussion thing. and they were like, mm. some of the wives were wearing so something. So what, yeah, what you gonna wear? What are you thinking? No, I, I'm what? definitely giving deference to other people's husbands. Absolutely. Other Absolutely. Yeah. I, I can't. That, to me, is disrespectful. <laughs> yes, it's disrespectful. Yeah, disrespectful. yeah you that. can't, like, so you, and you so shouldn't do that. Disrespectful. Like, let's say you're on, I've, you know, no I've seen tone. some, I've, okay, I've seen <laughs> some, um, some little cabins and stuff. I was like, oh, this is cute. I don't want to invite some couples mm-hmm. to this cabin, right? Selective. It has, like, a little, um, you said selective? Selective. In terms of who you're inviting. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I know the men are visual. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. ever want another woman's husband looking right. at me in a way mm-hmm. that is disrespectful to my husband. Mm-hmm. So Or being disrespectful to my own husband. Like t- you're talking about tempting their eyes. So, exactly. So what if you're going, because, you know, a lot of these cabins, they have, like, pools or uh, jacuzzis. So the jacuzzi in the pool is out. No, it's, it's not ours. Okay. It's oh, not ours. So then what are you wearing? But you're not wearing a thong. You're not wearing a thong. In front okay. of other men. So in front of other husbands. Piece, two pieces. Yeah. I think, I think so people go, gravitate towards the one piece. And the one piece mm-hmm. can still show. If you're a curvy woman. Exactly. If you're a curvy woman, it's going to. But a thong is an absolute That's a, that You cross the line. That is, <laughs> that is something that should be worn. Are you worn. putting that in the invitation? No. 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 I don't, I don't, no, I don't need you to should know because I should know my exactly. friend. Exactly. Yeah. I should know my friend. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Okay. The selective friend choice that you would be yes. you not coming on a trip in the thong, ma'am. <laughs> Sir, you're not coming in Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. We're not doing that. And I just think right. that if we're friends, we should want to make sure that we don't tempt each other's husbands um, you understand right. what i'm saying so i think that's another thing but it, i think back to what you were saying environment is everything um, when i'm with my husband on a date i'm not going to be looking like i'm going to church mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm not going to be covered up i'm just not mm-hmm. bridgerton i don't know so, <laughs> so you're not covered up, but i mean do you take any consideration to the men that may be seeing you like Audrey over here, Bridgerton, Bridgerton, no, not at all. On her date, on your date, on your date. She got the Bridgerton. I mean, not. I was joking. I'm not boom, boom, I'm not at all. Out right, but then there's oh men goodness. around. Do you take any consideration mm-hmm. to that, or is it just about like, is it fine for my husband? That's all we got. That's what we're rolling with. I'm his eye candy, his arm candy, everything. I represent him. When I go out, it's me and him. It, we we on a, I don't you don't I don't pay attention. I'm not paying attention to someone. We out on a date, and I, I always see myself as the girlfriend when I'm on a date. That's why I like to be dated. But that's a whole different conversation. But I like that because I want him to be like, mm, oh, okay, I see you. You know, like mm-hmm. I want him to have those same feelings. I don't want him to be like, oh. Yeah, girl. Mm-hmm. So, so, like, you know, just <laughs> like that's my wife. Yeah, I'm the, so the nice. mother of my children. <laughs> yeah, that's her over there. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm in agreement with that. Now, when I say Bridgerton, I'm just using <laughs> that phrase, but yeah. I'm not exactly going full on Bridgerton. Okay, let's just. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to explain this I just want to make sure. But mm. at the same time, it's I'm fine. very much. If you want your boobs out, it's fine. Okay? Like, you are for yeah. it. You are for it for you and your husband. That's right. <laughs> what I would say is that I, I, I am in total 100% agreement with you in the sense that I do want mm-hmm. to be attractive and for my husband yeah. and making sure that. I am accentuating the things okay. that he likes. You Absolutely. Know? I mean, at, so, but even in those moments, I'm not going overboard. You know, I mm-hmm. think there is 
uh, a line where it gets a little raunchy. I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? That's that needs to be behind closed doors. Okay. But I'm just saying, just looking for appealing. Yeah, exactly. There's always a yeah. like, oh, it's a little treat yeah. for you, and then yes, you don't right. have dessert. Later. But like you say, just <laughs> exactly. remaining attractive. exactly Me- remaining attractive. And, yes, you know, looking nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right, ladies. Well, so let's. I've I've been talking to some. I guess they're friends. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're so like acquaintances. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, mm-hmm. like, like people that I know. Um, that they were talking about like they want a man, right? Like they're mm. they're like a little bit older, like in their thirties. <laughs> Mm -mm. (laughs) I know it's sad I know it's sad but that's like so they're like a little bit older like you know not young and fresh in your 20s anymore where usually you find your man so you know they missed out on that boat um and they're trying to figure out like what it is Mm -hmm. that needs to be done well the crop ain't that good right now (laughs) (laughs) so like what tips may you have for like these women and men that may be trying to like cultivate like a spiritual attractiveness, a spiritual sexiness to attract somebody that is like spiritually inclined or like that they want, you know, like what is it that they should be like trying to exude? Is it about throwing out the scriptures? Is it about dress? Is it charisma, kindness? What do you guys think? Mm. What's the <laughs> problem, Audrey? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just anybody trying to do or trying to be and something. Not just being it just themselves. rubs me the wrong way. The wrong mm-hmm. way. I just feel like when the time comes, it will happen. Number one, um, and number two, being authentically you, yes. yeah. and it's just everything. Mm-hmm. It will attract what needs to be attracted. Mm-hmm. And um, the third thing is uh, going, con- maintaining a deep, intimate connection with God is everything as well because like I said he guides in all things especially when you invite him in all areas of your life Um, I invite him in the smallest of small to the biggest of big right like if I see oh lord I have a ball spot lord help me <laughs> get this together what are the natural ingredients you have provided yes. in this world to help me with it? I mean I, I, it's funny but I, I'm just saying something exactly. as small as that, that yeah. to the big things and right. so if somebody's trying to figure out what they can attract like you said inside out mm-hmm. and and that's what the word says too you need to f- fix a uh, work on what's inside what makes you happy what makes you purposeful Mm -hmm. Uh, who are you what do you like what don't you like what are you passionate about what brings joy Mm -hmm. do you have the fruits of the spirit where you are patient where you are kind where you are gentle like work on those things Mm -hmm. where are you heading what is your vision that's what i would work on and not try to fit a mold because uh, people will have uh, things to say if you try to be this, people have something to say. If you try to be that, there will always be something. But when you are grounded and rooted in who you are, to me, I think that will attract what you want to attract. Okay. Absolutely. So has any of your opinions on what it means to be sexy or spiritually sexy changed from this conversation? Or are you guys still pretty much grounded in what? I'm grounded. Okay. You got to have that workout body. <laughs> Physique. Listen. <laughs> oh my gosh, you just reminded me of something I heard again on the social uh, social media. What was it? Ah, uh, what was it? It was like, um, pretty much like spiritually fit in the streets, but <laughs> something but else in the sheets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are they are they spiritually fit in the sheets as well or not? No, no, spiritually fit like in they the physically. Streets, but no, but I'm saying like, are they physically? Was it like a dig or was it like, this is what I need for you? I need you. No, to it was like their personal okay. motto. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. all right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, their motto was okay. just like, I, I I can be spiritually fit in the streets, but in the sheets, you know, I also have to be. Fit. I have to come with. You have to be fit. Yeah. You have to be fit. You have to be fit. <laughs> yeah. be fit. I feel bad this day and age for like single. Absolutely, men and I women. agree. It's a hard time oh. to be single, and mm. then you're in your thirties. Single 30s. as a female. I mean, I feel well, like yeah. men yeah. and men have it. They 
They got it, man. They got the juice. They have a plethora of women yeah, they do. Choices. Of choices available to them. Yes. Yep. Um, our mm -hmm. fr a friend of ours said he likes butter pecan Puerto Ricans, right? Mm. So he likes that, like milk. I mean, he knows like, what he wants. But it's like but you have. It's not. You don't only have butter pecan. You, you got, got a lot to choose you got from. Mocha, you know, so there's so mm. many options yeah. for you to choose from. So I mm -hmm. feel bad for the women. Yeah, because um, we're the ones who have higher standards. We're not just visual. We, mm -hmm. we, we do start with some visual aspects that we like. We do. Yeah. But we have some standards because we're thinking down the line of our family and what we want that to look like and what we want the priest of our home to be like, mm -hmm. things of that right. nature that we all touched on. Yeah. Um, so being 35-ish right now and single mm -hmm. as a woman. It's hard. I'm sorry. Mercy, Lord. Like, I'm sorry. And, but the thing is, I don't want women to get discouraged mm -hmm. because I'm sure they're sitting there praying and I'm mm -hmm. sure they're waiting. And it's like, when is it my turn? You know what I mean? Um, and that, that's just a hard question in itself when you are trying to wait for the right reasons. I mean, I was there five years ago. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, I was, what, 30, 31. And, you know, I hadn't found somebody that I felt really understood me or I was compatible with or, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I understand. And I, re I relate to, you know, what is going on right now with the dating pool. It's, yeah. it's difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to come to a point where I truly believe that what will be for me is mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And right. nothing can take it away from me. And just trying to hold on to the faith um, walk and continually believe mm -hmm. that, you know, everything that is for me will be for me. And so I just want to encourage those, you know, right. who are out there. Look at this, um, turning into a Dr. Phil session. No, no, but I'm saying, <laughs> but I'm encouraging the, those ladies the yeah, same way. I'm not it. trying to fit a mold, but mm -hmm. understanding the vision and plan that God has for you and just really yeah. in spite of what may not appear or be present, mm -hmm. you know, just trusting in the process. Yeah. Yeah, don't maturity. look at what you see, yeah. whatever other relationship or marriage or whatever and say, oh, that's, I should have this or that because you have no idea Ooh, what, that's a whole you nother don't one. know <laughs> what's what happening. Is, somebody else's house. You do not know. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it may look good. It may look shiny on the outside. Yeah. Grass you, is not greener. Ooh wee. Well, so. that's, that's funny because what? No, what were you talking about? I was going about? to. Well, it's it's almost segue segueing into something else. So if you want. To oh, I was just gonna say that that whole statement right there because I just recently started watching um, Married to Huntsville because I was like, you know, like they in Huntsville, I might as well, you know. <laughs> uh, and then and like just the whole unfolding of the one couple's marriage um because mm. they like apparently he had been cheating on her for years like mm. over five years mm. right had literally like a whole relationship with somebody for three years but on the outside they look good they were the power couple mm. right they were on covers of magazines they were speaking they were like walking the streets and people would know who they were wow. but inside the home they were struggling mm -hmm. you know she was the, she was le she left the home and came back and so that statement about not looking at other people what every, everybody else is doing or what other people have um as even like a role model or an example you know is true yeah. because you have no idea what's going on in somebody else's home. so i absolutely like wholeheartedly concur with that mm -hmm. and if it was pastors just imagine that they are not pastors but it's happening in pastors' homes too, so yeah. it's, it's it's across the board, and that's that's sad. Definitely what was your can't segue, Audrey? No, I was just thinking, with what you just said, it sparked something else. You have those looking at other marriages and all that, but then you have those in this topic of Christian um, sexuality that hold certain beliefs as if um, what the beliefs that we cherish in our culture, like for example, virginity and all that, mm -hmm. um, or modesty, these, these concepts that for some are religious jargon in the sense that they 
their knowledge and understanding goes as deep as what they were taught, not necessarily that they have had a personal study on right. it mm -hmm. and really truly understanding the design mm -hmm. of what God had for it. Right. So then they take it and they make it like this, um, this, what is it? Um, emblem of honor mm -hmm. that goes way beyond the scope of yeah. what it was intended. Yeah. And so then it impacts their Absolutely. marriage as well, mm -hmm. or their relationships, well, yeah. marriage. Or future relationships. Or future relationships. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. for example, this idea of being so holy, mm -hmm. like, and, and carrying on this badge of virginity to the point that they cannot um, authentically accept sensuality and sexuality in in marriage. Now mm -hmm. they are married, mm -hmm. right? Right. And they right. don't, they they are not in touch. Right. right. Um, and I even read some articles um about a year ago about this one couple they you know of course waited and in the marriage the lady wanted to wait some more so that they could attain some type of holiness and oh. i'm like ma'am oh, okay what <laughs> <laughs> so okay. i mean in the article they were kind of praising the fact that they've gone so many months or that, so i'm not getting higher in heaven for that having like, this <laughs> Uh, intercourse, mm -mm. but I think that go against the uh, marriage no, vows. No, but they're <laughs> consummate. But consummate. Listen, I think some churches do a disadvantage in how they yes. are teaching people Absolutely. about presenting this. it, yes. presenting it, um, not really explaining God's design mm -hmm. for what sex should look like, yeah. what, what sex should it look like, and in what context it should yes. be done. Mm -hmm. But and and also people confusing that with what sensuality is and what that looks like in a marriage yeah like it is okay mm. to after you're to married what? no after you're married yeah, to, what? to <laughs> sensually and sexually um satisfy your husband uh -huh. or your wife okay yeah, yes right. yeah i said that unapologetically okay all right. yes i thought you, you know, were going to give some examples that's why oh yeah oh, no. <laughs> like the woman that was trying to wait or whatever that certain what is the word I'm looking for um, tasks or mm -hmm. certain things mm -hmm. aren't appropriate right mm -hmm. like for the marriage per mm -hmm. se like it's like oh it's only this way that is the right way vanilla so that's the <laughs> so we we'll talk about that on another one but I mean I really appreciate you guys like sharing all your thoughts mm -hmm. on what it means to be spiritually sexy, right? I mean, I think from the conversation, we've realized that it's a plethora, Absolutely. right? It's over a course of different environments, places, pe individually, right. right? Because I think what you said really brings it home, um, where it's a matter of like where you are with God first. But then also where you are with your husband, because my husband might be different than your husband in mm -hmm. terms of what is appropriate, right? right. So you mm -hmm. have to know who you're with yeah. to yeah. now be like, okay, I'm going to still like sh show this mm -hmm. or show mm -hmm. an semblance of like reverence, re respect, mm -hmm. um, while at the same time expressing myself. Mm -hmm. So finding that balance, like not only in yourself first, but then within your marriage or in your relationship is key. Right. So I think that's definitely what we can take away from this, okay, y'all? If you're trying Absolutely. to be spiritually sexy, Audrey's not like about trying, okay? Just be <laughs> authentically you um, and work on yourself. Absolutely. Do that, that inner work first with God and then all of the sexiness will spill out. Thank you, ladies. Thank <laughs> yeah, you so much for joining us. Yeah. Okay, um, if you guys have any comments for us on any future topics that you want us to talk about, leave them in the description box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us across all social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, we on it all. So go ahead, subscribe and follow us on those. Um, if you want any of these ladies' information, I don't know what for, okay, because they all married. But um, <laughs> we'll, we'll try to, like, incorporate some like Q and A's and things like that in the future. So um, you might want to like drop a little line about something. Do do that in the comment section below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Glory to God for good times, big laughs. The God
godly life we strive Turn it up for the king right here On Sunset Friday Live Let's go! Hey, Sunset Friday